Hi, this is Randy, and we want to continue on with uh, installing macOS onto ESXi, again, a non-supported configuration. We first of all had to patch our ESXi server, and we did that, and we verified the patch in our earlier videos. I want to take a look at our build guide here. Let's bring this up for a second. So you can see here that uh, as part of our class, we've identified the hardware for it uh, and some things here and some steps here. It's really a lot and pretty much the same as installing other virtual machines. You know, we're very familiar with installing Windows virtual machines, but we're, we're learning to install uh, Mac OS and, and Linux and PFSense and others, and they all are slightly different. But this is our build guide uh, for, um, for this. We are going to start with the ISO for 10.13. We will, once we have Mac OS built, we'll move it up to the latest version. As of today, it's 10.14. Uh, I don't know, 4 or something like that. So it'll start out as 10.13 and then the, through the process of online updates, it'll, it'll work its way up higher. So the part that's a little bit unusual is this part down here. And that's where we have to do some work with the disk utility and that's what I want to show you. Other than that it's really straightforward. Yes there are things to learn uh, but it's straightforward. Uh, this is the other one that's a little bit odd is the way that we install VM tools itself is the same but where you get the VM tools is different because this is a non-supported installation uh, VMware doesn't provide the tools with ESXi the, uh, the VMware tools for Mac OS with ESXi so we have to go get them. We actually go get them I've got a web link for it, and we go get them as uh, if you were installing Mac OS on Mac hardware. Uh, there's a, a, a place where you can go get um, the, the tools. Okay, so enough said with that. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and do my build. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of catch uh, parts, bits and pieces of the build here so that you're not watching what you're already familiar with. So I'm going to pause the video right here, and I'll go ahead and do the build, mount the ISO, and get things started. All right, just a quick shot here showing you that uh, even though this is non-supported, you will find Mac OS listed as a guest OS family, and you will find version information. And again, we're going to install my ISO that I have is for 10.13, and then later we'll move it to 10.14, and we'll come back and we'll change this reference. Okay. Another jump in here just to um, look at some more things here. Uh, this part of it's real straightforward, but I, I wanted to show you one thing. In um, in our training situation, training environment here, I, I prefer to move this off of thick provisioning to thin provisioning. Thin provisioning is kind of like a dynamic disk with Hyper-V in that it lets it grow as needed. You're going to be surprised at how big of an install this is. Uh, you know, we tend to think of Linux Unix as being pretty light as far as uh, hard disk requirements. But uh, last time I did this, I mean, well, I mean this literally just a few days ago, it, it was a 30 gig install once all patched and everything applied. And so by going thin provisioning, again, in a training environment, we wouldn't do that in production. And we wouldn't do this Mac OS in production. This is just for training. Uh, we would use thick provisioning, but uh, that's kind of gives us some, um, conserves our hardware resources. Uh, other than that, we're real straightforward here. I've mounted the ISO. I don't mean to scroll too fast here, but we should see the ISO. There it is, the Mac ISO. And uh, again, I'll pause the video uh, and uh, we'll get the install started. All right, we've mounted the uh, ISO file and went ahead and initiated the installation. And I, I was just going to do just the, the, the disk management part of it because that is a little bit unique. But if you've never installed Mac OS, I thought it might be useful just to take a minute or two and walk through these initial screens. So we pick our language here. Okay. So now normally you would just continue with an install, but in our case, no. We have to go out and prep the disk. Uh, and from my experience, which is limited with Mac OS, this is unique to uh, installing Mac OS on ESXi. So go into Disk Utility. And what we need to do here is this is the virtual hard drive that we created here. So if I go ahead and click on it, it tells us its its size. Uh, okay. 
going to go slow here just so you can have a chance to watch all the screens and it gives me a chance to look at my notes also. So this is the virtual hard drive we created, but it's not formatted or pre it's not formatted at all. It's not prepared correctly. It's got something on it because we need to erase it, but we go to erase it and uh the name you can put in here is whatever you'd like. I'm going to put in uh Mac Mac OS uh, HD. And then we default uh, the rest of it. So this is a particular file system like Windows machines have particular, you know, like NTFS and and whatnot. Uh, Mac uh, has has options too for its file system, but we're going to go with the defaults here. Okay, which is the journal file system. File system. Okay, and a GUID partition table. So we go ahead and we say erase, and it's going to now prep the hard drive with that. You do need to be patient when installing Mac OS. The time it took me from mounting the ISO to get here was several minutes. And in my notes, I've got that it takes a, basically about a half an hour to get through the install. OK, but this is what we needed to do. We needed to come in here. We needed to select the existing uh, hard drive. And we needed to then go in and erase it and let it be formatted uh, as the, um, the journaled file system for Mac OS. And now that we've done that, again, if you're not familiar with Mac, we actually we exit now. We click on this red X up here, go out of the utility, and now we can go back to the installation. So I'll pause the video here as uh, uh, until we come up to something else interesting. Okay, jumping back in here, it just shows us this is the disk that we that we prepped, and so I click on it as my install my install destination. And uh, I then go ahead and click on, on Install. And again, I'll pause the video. All right, so we're back. It took a good 20, 25 minutes or so to get to this screen. And, and it was counting down and telling me. And you watch the bar go across and all the normal installation stuff. Let, let's go ahead and continue on. And again, this is for those who have never installed Mac OS before. Mac has some features built into it that if you have another Mac or even from a Windows uh, PC, you can transfer information. For us, we're, we're new, we're considering ourselves new users, and so we're not going to transfer anything at this time. Now, this is something that you can skip past it, but eventually, if you want to install any applications, you're, you're going to need to create an Apple ID account. And... The trick is, is to create one without having to give a credit card or in a training environment anyways. That's that's my concern is I don't want students to have to provide credit card information just to as part of a course. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and log in. I do have an Apple account. I do have a, a MacBook as part of my, my job. My employer provides me with the MacBook. And so I'm going to go ahead and log into my account. But again, you can skip past this, and you can complete the installation. You can install VM tools. You can do a lot of stuff. But when you go to do to add anything, when you go to add, you know, like Microsoft Remote Desktop, or you go to the Apple Store, it's gonna it's gonna require that you create an Apple ID. So sooner or later, you're gonna to need to do it. Whether you do it now or whether you do it later, I'll leave it up to you. But again, I'm gonna pause the video and go ahead and and, and enter my information. I, I failed to mention that um, you do need internet access to do this, and and so here in our test environment, where we haven't brought up our firewall or anything yet, I'm using the existing what we call uh, HED-224A network, which has DHCP and a firewall, and DNS and all that stuff provided. And uh, so while while I'm doing the build, I'm I'm on the uh, I don't know what you, what network you call it, but it's not the network this server will eventually or this this Mac OS will eventually go on to another network behind its own firewall. But for now, um, you need you do need uh, network connectivity to to get get to the Apple store and, and if you have an account it'll it'll text you and whatnot. Okay, so we're just going through login information now, creating an account and uh, this is all in the build guide. So I'm gonna again pause the video. Uh, it's getting long, we're up to nine and a half minutes now and I, I don't like videos to go that long, so hold tight. So depending upon whether you went ahead and did your Apple ID and and uh, followed that route to complete the installation or if you waited to do that later, you're going to get to the desktop and this is the default 10.10.14 10 10.13 10 .10 desktop. 
And uh, all I'm going to do here to wrap up this video is go ahead and eject uh, the Mac OS install DVD. We're going to let that one go. And I'm going to uh, shut down the Mac OS, uh, take a snapshot of it. I'm, I'm virtual here, so I can do that because from here on we're going to play with stuff. I do want to show you how to do the VM tools. And uh, then beyond that, as far as creating accounts for yourself, doing updates and whatnot, I'm going to leave that to self-discovery. Here, here in the classroom, we will collaborate. We can, of course, share information, but uh, there's always an element of, of learning on our own, which is part of our industry, and uh, I don't want to take that experience away from you. You can see it's noting that I've got an update here. If we leave it to itself, as far as updates go, it will update through the 10.13 line, and then we, we will have to manually ask it to go to 10.14 to the Mojave. Uh, which we do. We want to get to the latest versions. But let me go ahead and wrap up this video and get set up to uh, show you about the VM tools.